I'm going to show you how to use a sling psychrometer. This instrument is used to determine relative humidity, dew point, and air temperature. Now, uh, most coating manufacturers, they're going to specify uh, what relative humidity that their product can be applied at. Um, some of them don't. Some of them doesn't matter. Uh, like your 100% solids materials. But the universal rule is that whenever you're going to be using any type of a, uh, a coating, you know, uh, industrial coating, you know, most of the time it's going to be epoxy or maybe some types of urethanes, uh, that the surface temperature has to be five degrees above the dew point. And that, that's pretty universal. Now, there is some exceptions for uh, materials that go down on pipes that are sweating. But for the most part, we're looking for five degrees above the dew point for the surface temperature. Now, the reason that that's important is, now here's a glass of iced tea and that there is condensation developing on the outside of it. The reason that that develops is because the temperature of the surface is at or below the dew point. So in other words, what happens is the, the surface temperature is cold enough to condensate the moisture that is in the air and it causes it to form on the surface. Now, when we're dealing with industrial coatings, uh, especially the ones that go on metal surfaces, we don't want that moisture on there, you know, for, you know, some of our pretty obvious reasons, you know, there, there's, there's a few reasons why you don't want it on there. Oh, uh, you know, but just remember, we're trying to determine at what temperature that water is going to form on the surface. So in order to do that, there's a instrument that was invented by I'm not sure who, but one of these bulbs has has a wet sock on it. Uh, here's a it's got a little reservoir in the top, and you pour you know distilled water in there, and it will wet that sock. So you have two different temperature readings. Now the theory behind this is that 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 wet sock as the water evaporates, it's going to cool this, this thermometer down more than this one, okay? And that's going to be oh, in proportion to how much humidity is in the air. In other words, if there's a lot of humidity in the air, let's say it's 100% humidity, then the water on this sock isn't going to be able to evaporate because the air is already saturated with humidity. So it's going to let you know the difference. So what we're looking to find out is what the difference is. We're looking to find out that, that this one's at a, at a certain temperature and this one is going to be less than that. So that's going to give you a, you know, maybe a, a five or 10 point difference or whatever it is. Those numbers are going to be plugged into a, a formula and that's going to be what determines uh, your relative humidity and your dew point. So now to let you know a little bit about how this instrument works, um, I'll tell you what, what I like to do whenever, whenever I go out on a job site, especially in the morning, when I know that things are going to be close and I'm looking for conditions to start getting better so that coating application can, can start. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, you may be in a situation where there's 100, 200, 300 painters or fireproofers that are, that are waiting on someone to determine if it's okay to go to work or not. So it's very important to be accurate in this because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of time, of of manpower that's waiting. Uh, there is also the implications of if we get it done incorrectly, if we get it done incorrectly and they start applying before, you know, we have the correct conditions, then we could run into coding failure 
you know, later on down the road. They don't always show up immediately. So typically my, uh, my course of, of action in the mornings is that I'm going to have a something that's going to give me the surface temperature. Now I, I like to use these these magnetic uh, surface temperature gauges and what I'll do is I'll go out to where I expect coating to be, be, be being done and then I'm going to take and I'm going to just stick that on there and I'm going to let it get get adjusted you know because this thing's probably been sitting in my truck or whatever the case is you know and it's going to be a different temperature I, I want it to get acclimated the same thing with with these is usually if I know I'm going to go out there and take conditions I will I will just have it like this and I'll I'll you know walk to where I'm going and I'm in the meat and I'm letting it get acclimated sometimes I'll let it you know sling around but what we want to do is we want to get this you know, that's get it adjusted to the to the surrounding temperatures that we're that we're going to be you know reading. So, um, the way this works is we have the water in there, we let it get acclimated, and then we're just going to spin it. We're going to spin it. You know, many people ain't going to know what you're doing. You know, it's kind of interesting when you're walking around doing this on the job site. If people aren't familiar with what these are, they're people look at you like you're you're from Mars that you don't, well, what is this person doing? You know, and, and, um, you know, sometimes I like to kid around to say, Hey, yeah, this is my nunchucks or whatever. But, but what we're doing is we're, we're forcing the air to hit that sock. We're forcing the air to hit that sock and, and it's going to, uh, to allow it to start to evaporate. If the atmosphere, if the surrounding atmosphere will allow it to, and remember, if we're if we're at 100% humidity, then nothing else can evaporate into the air, and that'll you will end up with the with the same readings on either one. So now, I believe the 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 rule of thumb is you know to spin it for 45 seconds, and I've never seen somebody sit around there with a stopwatch, you know, to try to figure out how long they've actually spun it i believe that the 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 intent is to to keep spinning these and taking readings until you get consistent readings now i don't know if you can see this or not but we're going to end up with two different we're going to end up with two different um readings if we have uh, a humidity level that's 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 um below a hundred. So I'm coming up with like seventy eight and sixty nine. So seventy eight that's gonna be your 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 ambient, your 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 air temperature. And then the sixty nine is your wet bulb. Again it's a it's a depressed number. Oh because the water is evaporating off the wet bulb and it's and it's making that temperature on that on that side drop that's going to tell you what your relative humidity is and your dew point is so i'm just going to do this a couple more times and make sure i'm getting similar readings again i'm at 78 and 68 so i'm getting pretty pretty consistent readings if they're like a point different every time you know that's 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 pretty close so and again i usually let these things acclimate you know if i get it out of a out of a truck and i walk outside and the, and the temperature is greatly different you know i'm going to just let it you know kind of oh uh, uh, get adjusted to the surrounding temperatures and i'm and i'm trying to get a repeatable i'm trying to get repeatable numbers is what i'm trying to do so at this point, I'm looking at 78 and 68. So I'm getting repeatable numbers. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start writing this down. And I use uh, 78, 68. So I'm looking at, and, and these numbers are air temperature and wet bulb. I'm getting pretty consistent numbers. I've been getting 78, 68 for the last three, 68. So um, now there is a, a few ways to, to find out 
what what your numbers are, what your relative humidity number and your dew point is. I personally believe that the that the dew point is more important because that's the one where your water is going to form on the surface. And if you're dealing with, you know, a, a steel substrate with an epoxy coating and you get water trapped in there, you know, you're going to end up with problems eventually with that coating. So, um, you know, in, in NACE training, they actually uh, teach you to use the, the psychometric charts, you know, put out by the Weather Bureau, I believe it is. But um, nowadays we actually have a app. It's, it's called an air light app. Now this is an, an image of my phone. Uh, you go to Play Store or whatever it is on the Apple and you're gonna look for a psychrometric calculator. Uh, I get the air light one, I've tried a few of them. This is the one that I like the best. Uh, this particular one asks you for altitude. I Googled the altitude. A lot of times I'll just get it off my Garmin where I'm at. Um, the dry bulb was 78 that's the one without the wet sock on it and it's really your it's synonymous with your air temperature ambient wet bulb is the one that was lower it was 68 after we had spun it a few times and we got consistent uh, readings and there's a 10 point difference there that lets you know that there's a lot of water evaporating off of this uh, in order to cool it from 78 to 68. Okay, we're going to hit calculate and it's going to give us our relative humidity. It's going to give us our dew point. Now the relative humidity that's going to vary on your uh, product. Your manufacturer of, of the paint product is going to specify what the requirement is for that, if any. Some of them don't have a requirement. And uh, your company specification is also going to um, usually give you a relative humidity requirement. Like uh, some of them will say 85% relative humidity maximum before coating application. You know, they'll say something like that. Um, I think that the smart ones, they leave it up to the manufacturer. That way they don't run into problems. But um, uh, the dew point that is we it's determined to be 63 degrees so in other words the temperature of the surface when it's at or below 63 degrees in this condition is going to form moisture on the surface now the universal rule is that our surface temperature has to be five degrees above that dew point for us to be able to start coating. You know, we're gonna look for, for for surface temperature and I got what, here it's saying I got mm, 78, it's the same. Temperature surface is 78. So, and if my dew point is 63, then I am well above, you know, I've got, you know, my my surface temperature is is over five. So in other words, if my if my dew point is 63 then my surface temperature has to be at least 68 and uh, what we're also need to be looking for in a in a work environment we need to be looking for the fact that that these conditions are getting better you know in the morning uh, your morning when you when when you get get on job site first thing if you've got dew on on like your vehicles and stuff like that, you'll know that the the, the, dew, the dew point has already been there. You know, what happens is that at nighttime the air cools, which, you know, it decreases, it, it, it shrinks the, the, the size of the, the body of air, but the humidity in there, it, it stays there, so it ends up getting higher percentage. Uh, that's why like during the day whenever things heat up, that body of air expands, but the amount of water is the same. So if the amount of air is, if the air is expanding, then the percentage of water relative to that air is getting less. You know, air is expanding. So if it was 100%, it expands, it'll drop down 80, 70 or whatever. 
whatever it does, you know. But uh, we need to be reading uh, what our manufacturer specs are, because if our manufacturer specs say that we need to have, you know, 85 relative humidity maximum, then that's what we go by. If the the client spec says that we got to have 80, then that's the number we need to be looking at. We need to be looking to make sure we have that. Uh, sometimes these numbers are hard to, to, to obtain in certain situations. You know, if you get in a situation where it's just really hard to get the numbers, you may want to talk to the manufacturer rep, you know, uh, you know, to get some, uh, some documentation from them uh, to where you can take to your to your client to let them know that hey you know the you know you're 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 asking for more of a more of a requirement than the manufacturer is so and we're having a hard time getting things done can we maybe go with the manufacturer and there's also a little chart on the side where you line up the wet bulb and dry bulb readings and then it will tell you on that little chart what the RH is, the relative humidity percentage. See, we're lining up um, 78 and 68. 78 on the dry bulb to 68 on the wet bulb, and then it's pointing to eh, somewhere around close to 60. As far as like the care and use of these things, one thing that I found out is these these uh the spirits in here where you have the red if you like store these things and you drive them you know you stick them in the door of your your truck and you're driving around and they're just kind of bouncing around rattling around you know what it does is it ends up separating the the spirits and you'll get little lines in them and it'll it'll make them to where you can't really use them you have to buy a new one um these are these are decent um, to have, you know, like for paint forming on the job site. I prefer these. Um, uh, I've just, you know, I've, I've used the, the digital ones, you know, electronic ones. You know, they're, they're very expensive, you know, and if, and if your company wants to, to buy one for you and supply it to you, you know, and it's calibrated and, and you're uh, periodically, you know, checking it against against something to make sure that that the thing's still reading accurately you know that i can see that they're a lot faster to use um the problem i found with them is that if they're not taken care of you know because a lot of you know paint contractors you know they'll go out there they'll use it they'll they'll leave it sit out in the sun they'll get their numbers write them down set it up somewhere it'll fall in the ditch or they'll throw it on the dash of the the, the vehicle and it'll sit out there you know, it'll bounce around. They don't take care of them. And what happens is they get out of calibration and they're very expensive. You know, we're talking, you know, six to eight hundred, six to eight hundred dollars for one of those. And, um, oh, they come up missing, you know, whole nine hours easier. You know, they're, you know, somewhere around a hundred bucks, give or take. And if you lose one, you know, it's a hundred bucks, but it's a whole lot better than, you know, six fifty or seven hundred bucks. So, and if you break them same story and there it's just i've seen that these you get repeatable results i can be on a job site where i've got three paint contractors and we're all out there in the morning all of us got our little our little whirly birds we're going at it and i i, I see consistently you know that we're going to be you know within a point you know usually if we're out there doing our due diligence and we're spinning them we're letting them get acclimating we're reading them right and we're recording them right we're going to be pretty close to our results you know i have seen the electronic ones where you've got two calibrated ones right next to each other and they're 15 points off you know so i i tend to to want to stick with these you know it's just a it's a pretty heavy investment on a on an electronic one i'm not saying I don't do it i've bought them before um I've just found out that these these work better for me.